Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Andrew Smith. I am the team leader here at Keller Williams Conroe. And basically, my function is to recruit and train. So, thank you for coming this evening. I've given you a brochure. Uh, it's called Career Opportunity Brochure. This has got all the steps that we're going to cover tonight. Uh, basically, what it's going to look like this the first part of the presentation will basically go over how you get, go about getting a Texas real estate license. Uh, after that, what we'll do is probably about 7.30, we'll take a quick 15 minute break, and then we'll come back and we'll try to wrap up before 9.30. Is that okay? I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to be out here in about 45 minutes to an hour, uh, depending on how many questions you have. I just like to see people's faces and they go, oh, I didn't know I signed up for that. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll go over the benefits of Keller Williams and why, why it's uh, a great company to work with. So um, first off, in order to get a Texas real estate license, there's uh, six different classes that you need to take. Uh, you can take these classes in person, or you can take them online. It doesn't matter to me how you decide to do it. Uh, but uh, what I will say is that this school right here, it's the Texas Institute of Real Estate, they came to us about a year and a half ago and they said, if you were sponsored by Keller Williams and you'll have that opportunity tonight, then we will give you your classes for half off. So I've also found that the people that do the classes online, that they're able to go through them much quicker. Because when you're in a classroom, it's truly 30 hours. This is what your class is, uh, what it takes to go through. Whereas in online, they're able to accomplish the same thing in about an hour and a half to two hours. You know, it's the fastest that people have been able to go through them. Now, that doesn't get you out of learning the material. You still got to learn that for the state exam. But there's also a prep course that you get included with that. And if you master that and you do a good job on that, then you can go and, and, and learn it during that part of the process. So. Perfect. Okay, so you've already finished your, all your classes? No. You, you they have, just sent me the okay. thing saying that they updated it. So. Perfect. Well, they're a great real estate school as well. You know, all the reason we talk about this one is just because they have all the half off okay. classes. So it really doesn't matter to us where you decide you want to go, but there is a special offer that you'll receive, you know, through the Texas Institute of Real Estate to get the half off. Um, basically, what you'll have is there's six different classes that you need to take. It's principles one, principles two, agency, contracts, promulgated contracts, and finance. And don't worry about it, so you're trying to scribble them all down. They're all right there in the little brochure for you um, listed. It looks like there's only five classes, but one of them is two parts to the principles of one and two. It's a 60-hour class. So it's 180 classroom hours, um, or like I mentioned, you can do them online. I've heard of somebody, the uh, owner of the school, that told me that somebody go through all classes in one day before. So it is possible to go through them relatively quickly. It's all open book. Okay, so you're able to go and to take the classes as fast as you can read, basically. You know, you just go through and start the questions. Uh, a lot of people use Adobe Acrobat to go through because that even has a keyword search function, allows you to find the answers, mm -hmm. go back up and plug it in. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't get you out of learning the material. You still got to know it when you go in and you take the state exam, which you'll have to do after you've met the minimum requirements from the state to have you show and prove that you've met the uh, requirements by passing all six of those classes. However, you still, the other test is not open book and you'll need to know that stuff. And so I recommend, you know, taking that prep course very seriously. And if you can get about an 85 or higher, you're building in enough of a cushion where you should pass that test the first time you take it. Okay? Is it still as hard as it's um, I don't think so. I mean, I think that that just depends on how much someone prepares for it. If you prepare for it and take it seriously, very few people have come back and told me if they got an 85, nobody's ever come back and told me if they got 85 on the prep course and they must take the test that they didn't they pass it. So I think the people that are going and they're thinking it's going to be as easy as the open book part are the ones that aren't passing it. Because I've heard it's a very, very low success rate the first time for most people. But everybody that I've talked to, you know, most people pass it the first time they take it. Does you know. the prep course have an exam, a prep exam? Yes, you have a lot of practice exam. questions, and you can go back and do that again and again. That's what I recommend. Um, there's also a great app um, from Champions Real Estate School that you can download if you have like an iPhone or so, and I'll show you kind of what it looks like, but it's only like $2.99, and so I'd recommend getting that as well. It's kind of got little flashcards on it. As you can see here, it's like $2.99, and it's got great little th things. If you're waiting at the doctor's office or something like that, you can be doing questions like, for instance, on agency or fiduciary, you know, and basically it's got a question and then you flip, tip, tap it and it tells you exactly what the answer is. So I don't know if you saw that. It's called the Champions Real Estate School app. And it's $2.99. But it's just an extra tool that you can use to study. And it's convenient because it's always with you if you have your phone with you. So that's one of those neat tools. So going into that, after you take the classes and you get ready to, while you're studying for your exam, then what you'll do is you know, take those prep courses, sorry about that, and um, as you're going through that, again, just try to get it to where you're getting 85% or higher, and you should do fine when you go and actually take your state exam. Now, the state exam, there's actually two parts to that, and the closest location here is going to be at Beltway 8 and 45 in the Greenspoint area. 
Um, you'll go in, it's a PSI testing center, and you'll go in and you'll, you'll take the exam all at once. There's two parts to it though. There's a state part and a national part. And if I recall correctly, it will tell you when you've completed one part and you're going on to the next. But you must score a 70 or higher on both parts. So in other words, if you get 100 on one part and a 65 on the other, unfortunately it's not an average. You will have to go back and take it again. Now you won't have to take the part you passed, but my recommendation is just study that prep course enough until you're confident that you're going to do fine and then you're ready and you won't have to go back and take it anyway. So um, that's pretty much it as far as the, the going through the licensing processes. Does anybody have any questions at this point about that part? Okay, wow, that was quick. Mm -hmm. just have some questions. Um, the opportunity with this school is that they will give you the classes for all six classes that you need for $410, and that includes your prep course. And that's option, the seven course package. Now people always ask me, why do they have a 10 course package? Okay, that includes your first two years renewals. Okay, it's up to you if you wanna do it. My advice is if you do do the 10 course pack, just make sure you're taking the classes that you need first to get your license. Because I called somebody to check on them, see their work. I said, how are you doing your class? Well, I'm taking this inspections class or something. I was like, what are you taking that class for? Oh, it came with my pack. I come to find out they bought the 10 course pack. They're doing classes they don't even need for two years before they even got their license. So just be sure that if you do purchase that, you, you do have the ability to go back and buy all your classes at half off as long as you're with Keller, Keller Williams. So I don't know about the, the benefit, um, you know, doing it all at once. It kind of muddies the waters, but if you want to, you certainly can. But just know that these are the only ones that you need that are required for you to be eligible to sign up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's really only six, but the seventh course is that prep course. Okay, so we kind of kind of clear on the actual licensing process. All right, well, you all want to learn a little bit about Keller Williams and what we have to offer here. Okay, well, um, I was in um, sales. I, I started in 1997 in Bright College Station. I started at Century 21. I was with that company for about six years. I then moved to Remax. I was with them for about a year. And then I have my own company. It's called the Real Estate Group. I had that for about three years. And then someone approached me and they gave me one of these books. It's called the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Book. And you'll have a copy to update one of these books tonight if you like. Uh, basically, um, what it is, it's a model that they wrote and they interviewed the top real estate agents from across the country and they said, how did you get to where you are? And all of them had somewhat similar but enough variances in the way that they did business that they basically took these models and they, and they, and they kind of broke them down and built them back up into pieces that anybody could follow to take your business to a, to a level in which you could net a million dollars or more a year. Now, is it easy? No. No, I didn't say it was easy. But even if that's not your goal, and your goal might be to earn 50 or 75 or 100 or $200,000, you can stop wherever you want because that's all on the way to a million. So if you decide, I don't want to have a seventh level team or anything, you know, by all means, just stop wherever you're happy. But this it just does show that if you follow the model that's in this book, that you can take your career wherever. And so the first thing that really sets Keller Williams apart from a lot of our competitors is just the training and education. You know, when I first started in the business, we had one training class a week for new agents, okay? And, you know, so what I did is I found myself going outside the company and going to real estate seminars and real estate training and hiring coaches outside the company because I simply didn't have it there. And here, I'm gonna give you a copy of our training calendar. You'll see that we have training every single day. We've got generally between two to three classes. And my recommendation is, is while you're going through the other classes, to come get involved in the training that we have to offer here, okay? In most cases, there's no cost for the training that we have. Occasionally, there will be a class, and they're marked on here. It would say like $25 or $30 if there was a cost, because sometimes we'll bring in a trainer, and that's what they charge or something like that. Everything is optional, okay, as far as if you want to attend the class or not. Okay, We do take attendance. But the benefit of coming to a class and, and, and getting the attendance is that if you'd like to be on our property time, that's basically where, where the agent that's on call, some folks could refer to it as floor time or property time or property desk. That's basically where all the leads that come into the office during that time go to the agent that's on call. And so generally the agents here receive between four to five shifts a month. They're generally hour and a half to two hour shifts. And so about once a week they would get uh, the, all the calls that came in the office during that time. And it's all, uh, you know, of the calls that come in, it's all uh, walk-ins, it's all internet leads, and we even have chat on our website that either the client or you may initiate. So those are options for you. And there's a list that, I don't know if it's in your packet, that I'm fixing to give you, but if not, we can get you one that tells you what, what the requirements are to get on property desk for the first time. 
but simply to stay on it after you've got on it for the first time, all you need to do is simply come to two power meetings, which are Tuesday mornings, go on two property tours, which immediately follow the uh, power meeting, and then go to two any other trainings on our schedule. And we have trainings every every day, every week. And so, basically, you know, that's an option that you can get started immediately. Now, tomorrow we have a project called Red Day, and I'll get into that in a second. So we are not going to be open tomorrow, uh, but we do have classes generally every other day. So as you come, try to get involved in those. Um, excuse me, do you have yes. the call? Would you come to those classes? No, ma'am. Just, just come straight. If they're most, I'd say 95% of them are in this room right here. Okay. And depending on the size of the class, I mean, I've got some classes where we have two or three people. I have others where we might have, you know, 15 or, or, or 20. You know, it just depends on what the class is, when it is, how relevant it is to what the agents are looking to learn. Okay. You know, but there's definitely options. And so my recommendation is take this training time and anything that you're available you can come to. Now, most of our classes are Mondays through Fridays. We very seldom have class on the weekend, and most of them are between business hours. So if you have another job, that may be something that you're unavailable to come to. But we do have another option as far as that goes as well. We have a mentoring program. Okay? And my recommendation is when you get involved here, get involved as much as you can. Okay? Here's a list of our mentors, and you're welcome to call them and shadow along with any of them. Uh, we have ones that go, uh, if you want to go like on a listing appointment, if you'd like to go on a buyer appointment to a closing, um, you know, watch them run like a CMA or, or do any of the things that they do on a regular basis. They're available to look over your paperwork and so forth, but it's an option for you to kind of get involved immediately so that you have the um, knowledge once you actually get your license because there's two different things. There's one, you're getting your license, okay? That means you have the ability to sell something in the state. The other is how to do it. And that's where we come involved, you come and get involved. And that's why we have as many classes as we do, because it's important to know that there's a lot of different things that you need to learn. I tell people that when you get into real estate, it's kind of like learning another language. And for instance, if I wanted to learn Spanish, I would learn it a whole lot faster if I relocated to Mexico City for six months or a year, than I would go into Lone Star College for an hour or two, two a week. I mean, when you agree. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, the more that you can plug in and be a sponge and just absorb information, the better off you're gonna be when your license is actually active. Okay, so uh, again, try to get with some of our mentors. It doesn't have to be a mentor. They're just simply people that have volunteered. They are all top producers in this office, and they all have an office on site. So, you know, they're just some of the people you do it. But if you just meet up with another agent and you like them and you want to go chat with them, I mean, like you said, you know Tish, it would be a great, excellent model for you to go and, and follow. Unless you'd be willing. Um, you know, you're going to learn. And, and my recommendation is don't just go with one. Go with several of them because they're going to all do things a little bit differently, not as, not as necessarily right or wrong, but they're going to do things a little different. And so, therefore, you may go and, oh, I really like what she said in her presentation. I really like what he said. And make, make yours a combination of the, of the two of them. And so, that's in there for you. Um, I'll give you this, but I have the examples I need to pull out before I do that. Um, you also have our staff list in here. But one of the important things that I'll show you is this, this list right here. This is our market share. And so you can kind of see in comparison with our competitors, you know, our, our closest competitor. This measures the areas 19 and 39, which is basically North Montgomery County. And you can see we have about 15%, right at 14.757% of the market share for the area, okay? And which is more than three times our closest competitor. Well, the neat thing about this green part right here, those are listings, okay? So that's what makes the phone ring. Okay, listings are the bait for buyers. That's what generates calls. That's what generates people to come into the office. You know, all that is going to keep you busier, especially starting out. If you want to be on property desk, you know, that's going to be your agent. You can see we've gotten more than three or four times our closest competitor, which means that we're going to be getting more phone calls. And that's because we've got a lot of agents and a lot of top producers, and they're putting their signs out there, and those can be calls that come into the office. Okay. There's also some other great information in there, some information about Kelly's talks about we are the number one real estate company in the nation now. Actually, all of North America. And in this, we've got a flyer that tells a little bit about the different courses that we offer. Next month, we'll be starting at night. Okay? Um, we're going through a class called Bold right now, but there's a little short little synopsis of these different courses and what they are, what they are all of which we offer here in, the, in, the, in our office, with the exception of Bold, which we offer regionally. Um, and then you've got the events that Kelly always has. You know, that called Family Reunion, we've got Mega Camp, and you can read about those, learn a little bit more about those. So there's a lot of great things that you can, you can do. Um, 
Well, what I was looking for, oh, yes, we just got named within the last month or so as the number two training company in the nation. And this is not real estate training companies, this is just training companies in general. We're the number one real estate training company, but the number two training company overall, you know, in the nation by this company that uh, tracks that. And so, you know, there's a lot of, lot of put out into the, the education and training within our company. Well, there's more information there, you can take a look at it at your leisure. It's all uh, too many questions. Yes, ma'am. Some. Uh, a, a gold is a class that they are taking right now. The agents actually paid half. The office matched the other half. And we reimburse them based on their production. So, for instance, they get back $100 per transaction that they close up until the next time it comes. So, it should be completely free if they do, you know, as long as they're closing deals. Uh, for them, but in some some classes there's a charge, not very many, but bold is one that there is because they fly an instructor here from outside the area. You know, each week it's a one day class, it's an all day class, and we're fixing to graduate um, from this class on next Monday. But it's been seven weeks out of the uh, out of the last eight that so they the meet. Training that Keller Williams provides and the coaching and that kind of stuff—that's there's no cost for that. Most of it there's not. But you would know and you would determine whether or not you wanted to take a class or not. Okay. Nothing would be forced upon you. You'd have the option to say, okay, yeah, I want to do this, or no, I'm not going to, I'm going to set this one out. Okay. You know, and very few things, like there's one class on here, I think that we have an instructor coming in on the 19th, where her class costs $30. Okay. That's just because that's how much she earns and you know, make it worth her while to come in and, and, and teach it. So, any questions so far? Okay, well, that's a little bit about that education and training. You can see we've got all sorts of stuff, um, classes on an everyday basis. Um, I try to have at least you know two to three classes uh, just because it's important. That's how you get going in this business. Next is the fact that the company profit shares. And actually, before that is really the culture of the company. You can see right here on the wall the Keller Williams uh, belief system. Um, that's just basically kind of the beliefs of the agent here too. If there's ever a problem, we're going to look at those and see how we can solve it. Um, we're not a backstabbing, cutthroat uh, company. You know, it's it's a industry in which everybody's a competitor, but we're friendly competitors. And you know, Keller Williams values are got family business in that order, and that's basically the way that people treat each other here. You know, we have a very um, very very good positive you know culture within our within our office, and so we want to we want to keep it that way. Um, next is we have profit share, and that's something that definitely sets us apart from the other real estate companies as well. At every month, 48% of the profits that the company generates are, are shared back with the associates that help the company grow. And basically the way it works is if, for instance, you were doing a transaction with another agent, and you enjoy working with them, and you think they might be a good fit for us over here at Keller Williams, you can have them come and sit down, and I'll be happy to visit with them and try to recruit them on your behalf. But if they sign up with us, then they'll have the opportunity to name their sponsor. And that's whoever was most influential in their decision to join Keller Williams. And if they name you, and the company's profitable, and we've been profitable every month I've been here except for about three, and those were back in 2010, 2011, back when the market was different than it is now, then you will receive profit share. And that profit share, just depending on the um, amount that that agent contributed to the profit, uh, there's no ceiling on it. It's basically a secondary stream of income. When they set up the original Keller Williams, uh, they ended up having to reinvent the company, and this is something that the agents wanted, was to have a retirement plan. We can't have a retirement plan, uh, because that would make agents employees rather than independent contractors. And so basically what they did is they came and they said, well, here's another way of doing this. We can set up a profit share plan. After three years you're vested, meaning that you would still continue to receive income as long as you have people in your profit share tree. So it's really neat secondary stream of income. You know, I've seen agents that, that, that earn over, you know, a couple thousand dollars a month. I've seen some earn three dollars, you know, and some don't earn any if they don't participate in it. But it's a, it's a great secondary stream of income that you can participate in right away. You don't wait three years until you, you're, wait three years until you're invested, but you can start receiving profit share as soon as you help introduce some of the company and that person starts contributing. So it's just one of those things, constantly be aware of it. You know, it's an opportunity for you. Invite someone, they don't have to already be in the business. I will personally help them get started, same with you guys, you know, with showing them how they can take advantage of the school and, and go through that process, you know, rather quickly and get their real estate license. So it's just, the, 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 I guess the process is just constantly being aware 
of it. And you know, we have a lot of agents that are, that are super into it, and, and, and they send me a lot of referrals, and we have some that don't really pay much attention to it. It's, not, it's completely up to you whether or not something you want to participate in. There's no pressure, but it is an extra opportunity for you to earn a secondary stream of income. So, any questions about the profit share or anything? Well, not quite a bunch. Any questions about anything? You're going to <laughs> well, thank you. So, so you got have some questions. Thank you. I am thinking about money. Is there something? <clears throat> Excuse me. I thought I was reading something about like um, that Keller Williams has like a team. Um, you can you can form a team. That's actually what this book is about. Okay. And basically, you if you want if you want to earn a million dollars in real estate, it'd be real hard to do it by yourself. Okay, I'm not going to say it's impossible because you could sell one thirty one thirty million dollar office building and you could you could do that. But generally, if you're going to sell residential real estate, you're going to need a team in order to in order to earn a million dollars or more a year in real estate. And so, generally, what it looks like is you hire as you as you get busier. And that's what this book is basically about. It's basically it shows you who your first hire should be, how many people you need to have in your database, how many times you need to be contacting contacting them each year, and so forth. So that basically it gives you what you need to do in order to take your career. Now, if you don't want to get to that level, and some people don't, but I will say that there's a common misconception that the more that someone makes, the more they work. It cannot, it can quite honestly be the opposite. We had an agent here that took five months off last year, and was our top, one of our top producing agents. They're able to do this because through leverage, you know, basically they're hiring someone, they're having to pay that person to do it, but still, I'll trade $1 for $2 all day long, and that's basically the way it works. So, you know, that's an opportunity that you'll have uh, that is something that is, is um, very popular with Keller Williams is that they do have teams, but basically if you are the, the rainmaker or the team leader, whatever you want to call it, then you can have people that are working for you, you know, within the system. And so generally it looks like works like this. You, you work on your own for a while, and then you start to get so busy that you see, wait a second, this is a task that I could delegate to somebody else, that I could pay them $8, $10, $12 an hour, whatever, whatever it is, in order to do this, which would allow me more of my time, to go out and earn my $50 or $100 or $200, however much your time is worth networking, because that's what you're trying to network and market your business. And so you just have to figure out what those tasks are that you can delegate. And then so generally the first, and that's the position they recommend in the book, is an administrative assistant, someone to do your paperwork, someone to turn in your your listings and your and, and that kind of stuff, put your signs up at your properties. All the, you know, most of the activities within an agent's uh, daily duties can be delegated at some level. Now, certain things that are not going to be replaceable, and that's going to be you going and lead generating on your own and so forth, because no one's going to do as good a job at that as you yourself. But other than those types of tasks, in most cases, you can have a lot of that stuff delegated. And that's when the big teams, they start to have buyer's agents, and some even have listing specialists, and there's a lot of different things in which you can grow your team. But this basically takes you through it. And it's not a boring business book. It's very entertaining. There's a lot of great... Uh, stories, there's a, great, um, a lot of analogies that you'll, you'll find that, wow, this is, this is pretty interesting. So you don't have to know everything getting into it, but it is a very enlightening, and, you know. So what else? No questions. When you go in as um, an associate after you get your license, how long do you have to um, have a mentor before you you, you you don't have a certain period of time. My advice is until you're comfortable. Some people just come in and they jump in head first. And other people are just really slow to act. In fact, I'd recommend coming in and, and, and getting going. You know, have someone watch it over your shoulder, mm -hmm. but there's no sin, oh, you have to sit with a mentor for six weeks before you can get started or anything like that. No. For day your license is active, you can be out showing houses that afternoon. Now, the question is, do you know what you're doing? Right. That's really why I recommend doing the training simultaneously right. with while you're getting your license. A lot of the schools, they don't really know that that's even an option because I guess different offices have different standards. But we allow you to come in and start to get training while you're doing because that's going to shorten the learning curve. Even if you sold a house on your first day, it's generally going to be 30 to 45 days before you're going to get paid because that's how long it typically takes to close. Mm -hmm. So most people, by the way, don't sell a house on their first day. You know, So as much as we can shorten that learning curve, but I mean, if someone goes to real estate school and then they show up here, well, there's a day one on the learning part. But if you started your real estate school and you're learning at the same time, then you're, you're already a month or two into the learning part by the time you get your license active. And so that's why I think it's valuable to start to come and, and, and you know, if you have availability, that's going to help you be that much further ahead when, you know, when your license comes in active. Because it'll take a little while for it to get active. I mean, even the fastest I've ever seen anybody get a license is 20, I don't know, it was 23 or 24 days. 
Okay. And that is extremely fast. That, that's from, from starting the classes all the way to having a license active. Most people are, are over a month. Very few people get under a month, but that's happened. But one of the one of the girls that started here in the fall, she was able to accomplish that. And just everything fell into place right. In most cases, it won't go quite that fast. But she finished her classes like in a weekend, you know, submitted her online thing, and just everything fell into place. But a lot of times, Trek gets backed up. You know, they, 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 they just run through phases where sometimes they're really busy and sometimes, you know, they're, they're not quite as busy and she just happened to hit it at the right time. Well, if you, I don't know, um, I know someone who sells real estate, she said something about she went to Austin to take her test because she got it faster, she got hers. And, and, and that may be one of the things that you can do. I do know that they said that this one's been backed up for over a week before the local office and people couldn't, people couldn't get into it. It just depends because it's a testing center. And our area is really hopping right now. I mean, I would say we're probably in one of the top areas of the country in terms of the residential real estate. Um, people, you know, ExxonMobil, uh, they're obviously creating like 8,000 8, jobs. Anadarko doubling in size. I mean, all of these are, 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 are creating opportunities for us. The building that's just going on, it's just, you know, it's just tremendous. Um, and one of the things I was at, uh, one of our state representatives spoke just about a year, year and a half ago, and one of the things that he said was that, you know, that's great, it's bringing all those jobs, but every one of those jobs is going to create two to three additional jobs. Mm -hmm. Some may be low paying, some may be high paying, but you've got to have more grocery stores, you're going to have to have more gas stations, you're going to have more convenience stores, more orthodontists, I mean, you know, it, 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 everything is going to have to, to grow. And you see the evidence of that, you know, that HEB went over about a year, went up about a year ago, that's kind of across the street, for 336. And you're going to see more and more and more of that. And I think that you're going to see there comes a time where the distance where you don't know when you're going from, from Conroe to the Woodlands, but you're not going to know the difference when you're going from Conroe to Huntsville. I mean, with the exception of the state park, I think you're going to see more exits and more, you know, and just more and more growth. Because that's the only way we can grow. I mean, it's, it's basically grown out in the Woodlands. There might be little pockets where they can put some people here and there, but for the most part, it's, it, it's already done. So you're going to have resales that continue there, but you've got to continue to grow. And you also know about the area near Ryland, right, from the corner of uh, 336 and 45, mm -hmm. that, where the Boy Scout camp Yes, mm -hmm. and they're talking about doing a business park there. Yeah, that's going to so, be Yes, and so all that's just going to continue to help, you know. And how long is the difference between getting, um, how long do you have to be a residential uh, real estate agent before you can go to commercial, or can you just go straight into commercial? You, you can go straight in. When you get a Texas real estate license, you can sell commercial, you can sell luxury, you can sell residential, you can sell farm and ranch, there's no... It's all the same license. It is. It okay. is. Now, does that make someone qualified to do? Not necessarily. Uh, residential and commercial, big difference in terms of the way that it's done. Most of the time, residential is emotion. Uh, most of the time, with commercial, it is logic. Okay? Because the numbers have to make sense. In other words, someone will buy a building, no matter how ugly it is, if the cash flows for them. Where, if I want to buy a house, I don't want to buy an ugly house, regardless if, if I get a great price on it. You know, and, and so that's... Uh, one, one major difference, um, but it's it, it's it's a different thing. You you're qualified to do. I mean, not say qualified. You are able legal to do to do either or, you know, or like I mentioned, the other ones, luxury. You know, those are just different subsets of it, which you can just decide. Okay, I want to do that. We have here that some of our agents join the Keller Williams Luxury Division, or some of them join the Farm and Ranch, or some of them. Do, and that's just kind of a niche market. It just depends on what you want to do. Generally, you will not see someone that does commercial and residential. Mm -hmm. Now there are exceptions to that, but generally you won't. Generally they're going to pick one or the other. Mm -hmm. Just because if you're trying to do everything, then you become like jack of all trades. And I think you don't get as much credibility. A lot of niche markets are a great way to go where you establish yourself in a certain subdivision, where you establish with a, a certain type of property, whether it be condos and townhouses or luxury properties or you know uh, lakefront homes. You know, you, it, by doing that, you become more of an expert in that area and you find more people are willing to come to you. And you really don't eliminate other people coming to you. If you're a luxury home specialist and someone who's selling a $100,000 house still wants to sell their house, they're not, not going to call you because you because you do that. Now you might, you may alienate them if it's the other way around. If you specialize in first time home buyers, you may not get that luxury home. Right. But generally speaking, you're not going to alienate the buyers. They're still going to come to you. But just by having more credibility within a certain area, generally those people often do much better. One more question. Sure. You got as many questions as you want. Are you allowed to, like, I have a lot of family in San Antonio and a lot of friends mm -hmm. in San Antonio. Right. Can you take listings in another city? You can. Now, here's where you start to come up to an issue. Okay. And once you go to Texas Post State License, you can sell anything in the state. Okay. You have the ability to sell anything in the state of Texas. All states are governed by their own real estate commission. And so, therefore, you can't be one in Louisiana. Some states reciprocate. Texas is not one of them. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you want to get a Louisiana license, you've got to go through that whole process and do it there. 
However, within the state, the way you're going to start to run into issues is if you're not a member of that board, okay? Because each area has its own real estate board, okay? For, so in other words, you have the Houston Association of Realtors, you have the Bryan College Station Association, right. you have San Antonio, right. Austin, and Dallas. If you have enough clients or whatever, it may be worth it for you to, to join that board. That's completely a decision that you would have to look at individually. Okay. If you have one client that's going to buy a property, let's say, for instance, in Dallas, and it's a $200,000 house, I would recommend referring that buyer, getting your 20 to 30% referral fee, and not having to do anything. Okay. Now, let's change the situation. We had an agent here. Daughter was buying, I think, a three-quarter, or selling a three-quarter of a million dollar property and, and uh, purchasing a million dollar property. Okay. You're talking about $50,000 in commissions there. It made sense for her to join that board. Okay. Right. Because that's enough of a difference. But a typical thing. I just refer it out and then let, wait for some other people to refer you stuff, you know, try to build a network that way. Right. But there would be extreme things. So if you had, you know, if you thought you had 10 or 20 different clients that were going to be purchasing it or, or selling in San Antonio, I'd probably make it worth my while to go ahead and join that board. Okay. But if you think, oh, mm, I'm just going to have one this year or whatever about that, I probably wouldn't mess with it. Focus on your efforts here locally and then end up referring that to someone because you still get a good commission. I mean, you're still getting you know, 25% or, you know, 20 to 30%, whatever it is you negotiate, and not having to do anything. I mean, okay. you know, so separate, you get a signature on a, on a piece of paper. So that's one, another way that people generate uh, extra income within this business. Okay, great. Okay. And you can lease. I didn't even talk about that, but some of our agents, that's a quick step into it, because a lot of people, uh, some people turn their noses up at leases, and think, well, you know, this month's tenant is going to be next year's buyer, or could be, mm -hmm. you know, so you can be build, building a pipeline, as you're getting, especially as you're getting started, you know, by helping people do it, do a good enough job, stay in touch, you know, then the, and when they, it's time for them to buy, you hopefully they'll come back and, and use you. Okay. And if they go to a different area, well, you might be able to get that referral. Okay. So, what other questions? Do you know, I've been kind of watching the real estate market, and, you know, obviously it's booming right now, it's really hard to find a house buy, but, um, is that forecast? I mean, do y'all have any forecast on what's on the I don't, horizon? I don't or? know of anybody that's forecasting it going down. In fact, if you look, go on the Texas Real Estate, the Texas a and Real Estate Center, and they have, um, oh, I can't think of the gentleman's name, Dr. Gaines. He came and did a presentation. He usually posts those on the website. Uh, but it shows, like, the demographics for what they anticipate the growth of the different areas. And you can look up Montgomery County because he did a presentation here, um, I think it was probably six months, six to eight months ago. And he's got all those numbers and what it looks like. And I mean, it's just the, the, the state of Texas is supposed to be just almost doubling in size, you know, over the next, I think, by 2040 or something like that. I mean, it's just going to, it's just continuing. And we don't see any, anything, any reason for that That's to change. Thing yeah. a bad thing. I don't it, know it, 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 it is. It is. But in this business, it's, it's a good, good thing. Yes. You know, I mean, I, and I tell people that all the time. Yes, I, I, we live in Walden. Myself, our, our family lives in Walden. And every time I go around another corner, they have bulldozed a lot started doing a new house, and yes, that's frustrating, but at the same time, in our industry, that's a good thing. So if it really bothers me that much, I can pack up and I can move somewhere else a little further out. It doesn't bother me that much, at least not yet. But it is. I mean, it's getting to be like 1960 out here, you know, on 105. You could put in another light probably about three months ago. I'm just like, gee, we don't need any more lights, you know, you can't get home past enough. But I think they're going to continue to do that, and that's just what's got to happen, because that's the way it's growing. And so I think it's just going to, I don't think there's any forecast for any time in the near future that it's not going to be growing like that. Yeah. So they really haven't even started the growth of the Exxon Mobil thing yet. Right. Those people really, for the most part, there's some management stuff in, but for the most part, it hasn't really started yet. Right. So when that does, you're going to see even more. And the Grand so. Parkway and all that, it's mm -hmm. just contributing to that. It's like, you know, I mean, whether you like it or not, or really, whether you like it or not, Rick Cruz did an awesome job of green growth. To the state of Texas, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and, and that's what's state. very good. Yes, very yeah. There's a great video. It's called like Texaplex or something like that. That uh, some agent out of Dallas or something like come um, put. If you get a chance to Google that, it's it just talks about the whole area in between Austin, uh, uh, San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas, and just the tremendous job growth and, and, and everything that that's just here. The natural resources, you know, just so many so many different things. Not quite over here. You have questions? She's asking them all. <laughs> well, I have another one that sure. I, I kind of hate to ask, but I have to ask. The investment. Okay, you know, great. Great a question. a lot of stuff that goes into starting a real estate career that I don't think, well, at least I probably haven't thought about. Sure. You can get, 
Um, you know, your classes is just one part of what you're going to need to spend to get involved. That paid a lot more than that. Yeah, so I, I years ago. So. Well, mine's still mine's still valid. They keep sending me updates. I just haven't had time to do it yet. Because I have other things in there. Well, you know, hindsight's 2020. You didn't know, but didn't you know, know, that's just one of those things. But um, as far as what you're looking at, as far as your investment, if you go through the Texas um, uh, real estate real estate school, then you will invest about sixteen. About sixteen hundred dollars total, getting your lessons being up and running, and I'll break that down for you. Four ten is your classes, okay? Uh, about three hundred, and it's on the last page. It's actually getting your real estate license. It's basically about one hundred seventy five dollars to apply. Um, it's sixty one dollars for your exam, and it's forty five dollars to get fingerprinted. Okay, so that's about three hundred dollars. So you're about at seven hundred dollars now in it. Your next big expense is going to be joining the Houston Association of Realtors. And that's going to run you about six to seven hundred dollars. Okay, uh, depends on what kind of lockbox key you get. So there's a couple different things in that. That's not due now. You don't have to have that money in the bank now. But just know that that's coming before you can start practicing real estate. And then your last fee is it's one hundred ninety-five dollars to join Keller Williams. That wouldn't be due until the twentieth of the month after you your license was active. But if you add all that together, it's going to be about sixteen hundred dollars. Okay. Now, in addition to that, you're going to need business cards. You're going to you're going to need um, uh, if you're a good driver then let you get signs for your vehicle. If not, then I don't recommend it, you know. <laughs> you get a call, hey, so-and-so just come, no, I'm never using your company, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, it's uh, that's just stuff that's optional, you know, and it's not very expensive, but, you know, that's what we're looking at. Versus, let's say, for instance, you want to you wanna, you wanna own your own business in another field, well, let's say, for instance, the restaurant business, uh, if you look at, like, a Subway franchise, you know, you're going to go, you're going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars, and you're going to need all this equipment, you're going to need all the supplies, and, and so forth. And it's going to be, I mean, I don't know how many years, you know, maybe 2028 before you sell like $5 foot longs before you make your, foot, your money back. You know, whereas in here, you make your money back in your first deal. In just an average deal, you make almost double your investment back. There's really not very many businesses where you can do that. I mean, the potential here, yeah, yes, it's work. But if you do those activities, you can take your career wherever you want to go. Our average commission for this area is $6,000. You know, we saw our average sale price is a little over $200,000, 3% of that. Right at six thousand dollars, and then that's split between the company and the agent. But um, you know, I mean, it, it, you can take your career wherever you want to go. I mean, you know, you just average a house a month. You're you're uh, an average house a month, and you're earning over fifty thousand dollars. You two, you're at one hundred twenty thousand know, dollars. We had the rookie of the year here uh, back in I think two thousand twelve. You know, who made over a hundred thousand dollars for her first year in real estate. Now that's your extreme example. She won the rookie of the year for the region, but it's definitely possible. It's definitely doable if you do the right activities. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no reason why you, you can't reach whatever level you want to be. Now, there's some, you know, some people, most people get into real estate for one or two reasons, or both reasons. But you're looking at the income, because the income potential is all based on you. It's whatever you want to do. The other part is the fact that you have the flexibility. Well, I will say, you can have both. But you're not going to get the flexibility before you get the income. Because if you do, you're never going to get the income. And that's where some people kind of make that mistake. They come, oh, well, I'm just going to go take the afternoon off to go watch this, or I'm going to go do that. And you know, or I'm gonna get to the office at ten, and then you know, we go home at two. You know, go to lunch for an hour and a half in between. Yeah, you know, those people just you know, they're 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 never gonna make that much. Now, that, that's fine if that's what they want. There's some people that that's that's all they want. They're, they're gonna find selling a house or two a year. Well, that's that's completely fine. You know, we're fine with that too. That was another thing. Do y'all have certain requirements as what you have to sell? No, no. That's completely up to you. Um, well, we have a monthly due of one hundred dollars a month to be a part of our Okay. And what you're going to find out is if somebody's selling zero houses, they're probably not going to pay that forever. They're probably going to say, this just isn't worth it. Now, you sell one house, but you pay for the next five years worth, so it's not like it's a, a lot of money. We don't make money off of that. That's basically the um, uh, things that you're going to need to be successful in this business. That's going to be your websites. You get three different websites. You get a database program that allows you to contact all your sphere and so forth on a regular basis. Uh, we have an IT guy here that's helped here to help you if you get uh, you need help getting set up on the network or you need you get a virus on your computer. A lot of different things like that that you'll have at your you know at your disposal. So that you know you can, that's all included in that hundred dollars. But um, as far as um, you know anything else, it's just whatever you want to spend. You know I mean there's some agents about put about billboards, some get on grocery carts. Uh, you know I'm not a big believer in that stuff unless you can track it. Uh, I'm not going to say it's not a bad idea, but I want to know where's my where's, where's my calls coming from. And if you track those and they're working, then great, do it. And if they're not, you know, if you can't track it, I think for some people, you know, 
they just spend money thinking that it's making them money, and then in some cases, in reality, it's really not. They might get they might get more recognized, but more recognition doesn't necessarily mean, mean more sales. So. Mm -hmm. Are there any business grants that will help cover? I'm sorry? Are there any business grants out there that will help cover any of these types? I'm not familiar with them, but I'm not going to say no, just because I'm not familiar with them. You know, um, the closest thing we have is the school that offers the you know the half price. Um, but you know, it might be worth checking into. You know, I mean, I know there's a lot of government stuff out there, and I just haven't seen. Nobody's told me that it, that it would apply for for real estate. Now I do know some people if they get like a student loan or something like that, they can you can actually take these same classes at a school. So some people have done like their military, they got some um, you know some pay towards their, their education. They can go and they can take the classes like a Lone Star College or whatever. Um, the difference is is you're going through the full class and you actually get a grade for it. You know just as, in terms of your, your degree if you you know if you want. Um, so that's completely you know a different option. Um, but as far as just something just to do this, I'm not that I'm aware. Yes, um, I'm not licensed yet, and mm -hmm. originally I was looking to do the Champions for the Real Estate online. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably missed this, but I'll walk in line and sorry. It's okay. Um, so the Texas Institute of Real Estate, that's what y'all recommend? Well, basically, they're a different option for you where they will allow you to do the classes for half off. Okay. And let's do this because everybody else is. Um, uh, got a chance to hear that already. I'll go through that with you as soon as we've done it, if that's okay? That's and, and I'll just explain it again. It's just they don't have to hear it awesome. again, but I'll go over it with you and explain what the, how, the, how that works. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I already have that. So. Okay. Well, they're a good school. I, you I know, know I, school. I mean, it's not it's to take anything expensive. away. You had it, the, it, the cheap well, I bought it all. I bought it all at home. Oh, online. So. Oh, so you're doing, you're doing it online? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, you know you can go through it fast and know oh, yeah. that the prep course is the thing you want to focus on. I actually, what they told me, the email that they sent me, they told me that I need to go through the courses that I've already done. So I haven't done both. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to go through them. I have to, because they update to make sure that there were updates, to make sure there's no updates in those particular courses. They sent me all the new links to get the new um, PDFs for the books. Hmm. So. I just have to make sure nothing's going to update or change that I need to. Oh, for the exam is what you're saying. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. For the little practice it. test that you take at the end of each section, mm -hmm. I need to make sure there's nothing there missing that I need okay. to know. That's the go. only thing I need to do. I've taken both principles, I've taken contracts, and um, uh, agency. agency. I'm in the middle of agency right okay. now. Okay. Well, so, what do you anticipate completing? Well, I'm a student at Lone Star, and, but I'm taking the summer off to do that, and I'm also a substitute teach, so oh, well. as soon as school is, yeah. <laughs> um, I, as soon as school is out, so that would be the second week of June is when I'm starting. Okay. And I just finished school today, so. Okay. <clears throat> Super. So, unless my husband pushes this, me. The sooner you can get it done, the better position right. you're in. And right. here, here's why. Um, April through August is our busy season. You know, people like to, to buy houses during the spring and summer because if they're going to have to move their kids, they're going to do it in the summer. Right. You know, and so that's the main reason I think more than anything else. Second of all, the houses just show better. I mean, houses are going to show better when the grass is green and the trees are full and the you know, flowers are, you know. You know. And so that's another reason. And, and then lastly, um, a lot of, I didn't even realize this, you know, first couple years in, but you've got a lot more time in which you can show. You can literally show in the summer until 9, you know, 9.15 at night because mm -hmm. it's still light. Whereas when you come to November, December, it's getting dark at five or five thirty, right. and so you know when people get off work, you know, yeah, I mean you're going to have people buy houses every day of the year. I mean don't get me wrong, but we do majority of our business in the spring and summer, and it's gotten better just because of the whole Exxon Mobil and everything else, the growth in the area. That that, that our our low months were actually pretty good months, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the really good months are going to be really you know really really good. So that should probably start Monday. So, well, the sooner you can get to it, uh, you know, I mean, the better position you'll be in. And if you can come to the training that we've got here, the as better as position that you'll be in. Yeah, as long as it's mm -hmm. not working, perfect. Yeah. So we've got, like I said, you, if you sign up with us, you come to faster, everything you can. Right. The faster I do it, the happier the husband will be. Yeah. And the more money you'll make. Because you'll be happy about that. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to get into real estate. It really is. I mean, it's just, yeah, I think we're just at the. Now, tell me what you think of a 
of a pessimistic realtor who's telling you not to get into it because they're not doing that well? Does that mean they're not putting the time into it? Probably, but there's this thing that we talk about in one of the Keller Williams classes. Uh, it's called the class is called Bold. But they call it about they call it your drunk monkey. And one of the things they say is <laughs> is, is, is don't listen to your drunk monkey. That's your subconscious. That's saying that you can't do something. Uh, okay. We don't use that word. And what's that? My family doesn't use that word. Drunk don't monkey. Use the word can't. Exactly. Well, there you go. Then that's the right attitude. And you know, I mean, it's just I, you know, I got a glass of water. You know, I mean, how much water is in this thing? Okay, well there you go, and that's what it is. Just because someone else is, isn't doing or can't do something, don't let them say that you can't do it. Because I'll tell you, I, I cannot tell. I meet with people every day about getting into the business, and I cannot tell you who's going to be successful and who's not. But I will say that the main reason why people are successful in this business is because they have a passion for it. Doesn't mean you have to have one going into it, but you have to develop one for it. I didn't. I could care less about houses before I got into real estate. I really didn't know, but. Once I started doing it, I was excited about it, and I got to develop a passion real quickly. And I was one of the first to the office in, in the morning, one of the last to leave at, at night, and it was because I just generally really liked it. Okay, and if you have that, you know, they're just saying, I mean, you know, if you if you enjoy what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And, and, you know, and that it was, you know, what what it was like. And you see that those people, I mean, you can't tell they dress like a million bucks, they look like a million bucks, they say all the right things, they know the town. You think they're going to be great? Nah, eh, something shiny catches their eye over here, and they're out doing something else. And never succeed in real estate. Saying likewise, somebody you know, they don't dress too nice. They just kind of you know you really they don't talk that great. You know you just think huh, I don't know I don't know how this person. But they have a passion for it and they knock it out of the park. I mean you really you, know, you just you can't you can't tell. You can tell things that are assets that can make them more likely to succeed, but you can't tell what's in here. And I mean I've met with some people. I think man this person is just going to be a rock star, and they start into doing nothing. And then you've got other ones. Yeah I don't know, but. They end up doing awesome, okay. you know. I mean, that's just that. That's it. It's it's what's what's in here, and, and how passionate you are about it, and what your whys are. You know, what's your one of the things in the book? It's like, what's your big why? Why is it that you get up and, and go to work every morning? Is it you want a new car? Is it that you want to have a vacation? Plan? You want to send your kids to college? You want to get to a ministry? I mean, different things drive every single one of us. But what might be exciting to me may not mean anything to you, and vice versa. And so, if you figure out what your why is, and it's strong enough to make you go do whatever. Then you could be as successful as you want in this business. They were <clears throat> a couple of my friends that were negative about it. You know, well, you just can't expect two years no money. Yeah. Do you have that's money to live on for two years? Yeah. yeah. No, uh, that's uh, I know. That's people telling you what they couldn't do. And a lot of times we show. I don't know if you've seen that video. It's a really good one um, from the Pursuit of Happiness. But it's uh, if you haven't seen that movie, it's a really good movie. Uh, but it's uh, Will Smith plays a, uh, oh, a yes. guy that. Um, as a, a stockbroker, actually, I his name is Chris. Um, I've actually heard him speak twice at uh, Keller Williams events. But he's, he's, his kid's got this little basketball. He's bouncing his basketball. He's just, and he starts to tell him, don't get too involved in that one, because you'll only be as good as me, or maybe a little bit better, and, 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 and I wasn't very good. And you know, so the kid throws down the ball, and then he actually goes in, and he starts thinking about it. He's like, wait a second. Don't ever let somebody tell you what you can't do. And you know, that's just it. Don't let somebody else decide for you what you can do. I mean, decide for yourself and go do it. You're limited by what's up here. And Chris don't Gardner. let other people. Chris what's that? Chris, Chris Gardner. That's it. Yeah. But it's a it's a it's a it's a very good movie. But uh, it just talks about his and he was, you know, he his his wife left him with his child and he was living in the the uh, subway or, or a train station bathroom and it was just yeah. I mean, it was a, a crazy crazy story. But I mean, you determine what you're going to be. Don't mm -hmm. let somebody else do it for you. How is a commercial business with all the new It all depends on, on, on who the individual is that's doing it. I mean, it's only limited by what you do. You know, I mean, I have people that literally can come in here and they can be here for an hour or two and they can get more done than somebody else that's here all day because you're your own boss and so you do your own, your own. No one's coming over you and saying, okay, why aren't you making your phone calls or why aren't you doing this? I have people that come in here and they might be on Facebook all day and you know, then they leave at the end of the week. They don't know why they didn't get a paycheck. You know, yeah, they were in the office, but you know, you're not getting paid by the hour. There's nobody babysitting anyone. And so, at the same time, to me, that's a really cool thing because then you can take it wherever you want to go with it because there's no ceiling on how much money you can make either. So some people can go out and on one sale. I mean, you, especially in commercial, you could have a really big transaction. You know, we've had some agents here, some of our commercial agents, where they're carrying in 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar commission checks. You know, which can be exciting. Now, generally speaking, 
fewer and further between in commercial transactions, but bigger deals. It's kind of like swinging for the fences every time. Okay, that's the main difference. Whereas then the, 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 the residentials are kind of singles and maybe doubles here if they're a big property, but you know they're a lot of times with, with commercial, then they're really big transactions where they have a big payday. But generally, they just don't happen quite as frequently. You know, so not a right or wrong. What's your hourly requirement in the office during the week? Zero. Zero hours. Um, basically, you know, I'd recommend you be here as much as you can, but at the same time, we don't have a requirement. We don't have a check-in. We don't have anything like that. Now, if you want to be on property desk, there are requirements for that, like I mentioned earlier. But as far as actually coming into the office or whatever, you, you know, that's there's no nothing in says, oh, you need to be here X number of hours. Now, if you do want to be on the property desk, you need to come to two power meetings, two property tours, and two any other classes on our schedule. There's a list at the front desk that before the first time there's about 10 other, other things that you need to accomplish before doing it but that's just before the first time okay so we try to make it you know to where we can get you going up and going as quick as possible but there's certain things that you need to know before you can get out there and start doing them okay i mean people didn't i don't think people used to want to be on the uh, property the property desk you know it was like oh, i don't want to do that you know, certain right ones now. do and certain ones don't, but right now it's really good. I was going to say, it's a good place to be. Right it, it definitely is. I mean, they're fighting over it. Yeah. I mean, when I first got here, we had one month where I remember the agents got 13 shifts for the ones that were on there. We're down to about four or five now. And that's just because it's in high regard. People want to be on it. They, they want to qualify. I'd have times before people would be sitting there for an hour and have the following ring. Well, you know, I mean, now it's, it's, it's probably a little bit better than a lead an hour is what they're generating. That doesn't mean every time that you get on there, a phone's going to ring. You don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily, a shift isn't necessarily better than another shift. You know, I used to think, okay, Saturday morning's probably going to be better than Thursday afternoon. But that's not necessarily the case. I mean, it's just whenever that person decides to call the office, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. Mm -hmm. And the internet leads at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's correct, yes. There are four different types of leads that you get, or the call-ins, the walk-ins, the internet leads, and chat. We have chat on our website, and the client can initiate it. In other words, there's little boxes. Click on here to, to uh, you know, initiate a conversation. Or you can initiate it, because you actually get a little thing. I think it goes cha-ching or something like that. Somebody's and looking at whatever, and you can initiate it. You got it. Mm -hmm. And you can say, hey, my name is Bill. How can I help you, or something like that. And you can do this from your home, too? No, that's when you're on property desk. Mm -hmm. That's just that. Now, you will have your own website. And if you want to add that to your website, there might be a possibility of doing that. But as far as the ones that come into the company website, that's the way that that works. You only get it when you're on that shift. So. Does the company um, as a whole have a referral department? Or like mm -hmm. a corporate, corporate no. department? No, we don't. We're working on that, but we don't. I'll be honest with you, the referrals that come in on that kind of stuff like that, they take a huge amount out of it. And so I've had to talk to some, you know, some of our agents before. I mean, they're getting over forty percent now. I mean, yeah. and it's to be, and it's just, it's, it's getting to me. It's kind of getting out of hand. So go get the buyer for the house, or go get the listing for the one that they're, you know, and then you can get the full amount. Right. You know, because it's just, it's, it's just gotten crazy. They, they, they lock them up, and they end up, and it's the corporate company that gets all the money. You know, and I just, you know, so we haven't tried, tried very hard to get in it. We have, you know, filled a couple applications. Um, but I think there's still a lot of business to get out there that where you can make a whole lot more right. without having to go through that. Also, they can go through all sorts of red tape. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you've got to put down the deposits and stuff like that if the house is empty for the electric or whatever, and they'll, they'll be it. Um, same thing with foreclosures and, you know, and short sales and things like that. They're, 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 a, they're a whole different animal. And there's some people that work them really well, and you know, to them I, I give them credit, but it's just something there's a whole lot of business in this area right now or that doesn't need to be necessarily the way, where, where the focus is. You can do plenty of business without even getting into those type of markets. They, they can be a very frustrating thing. And there's agents that will pay you referrals to handle it for you, and then you don't have to mess with it all. And, I, and I'd highly recommend checking into that, because that's just something that when you start getting into some of those, they can be a, a nasty And when you set a foreclosure, the realtor eats a lot of stuff. My sister just bought one. That's how I know. And he paid for a lot of stuff. He paid for, like, cleaning. And really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, different companies have it different sale. ways. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and one thing, one tip I'll keep you, I didn't realize when I got in the market because I was, you know, significantly younger, but, you know, I thought I had to earn my way up. And looking back at that, I think, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't necessarily very smart of me. I thought I had to start 
sixty, seventy thousand dollar houses in order to graduate up to a hundred, and then one hundred and twenty, mm -hmm. and then one hundred and fifty, or whatever. Right. Where in reality, no. You, you, we've had agents come in here, and on their very first sale, they've sold a two hundred and fifty, uh, uh, two million, uh, two point five million dollar piece of property. You know, there's no reason that you have to limit. It's just my, it was my own limited I mean, belief thinking. I thought that it was like you know, like school. You had to graduate from kindergarten to go on a first grade to go on a second grade. Where it's not the case at all. You come out in your first house with me a million dollar waterfront property. I mean, that's just whatever it is that you want to focus on. You have to show that person that property and they buy. Exactly. So, what other questions? Yeah. Nothing? Okay. Well, here's what we have. Should you decide that you want to proceed with this, I have a sponsorship form. If you fill out the sponsorship form, basically what I'll do is I'll send this to school. You don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to send it to the school for you because you've already got your stuff or whatever like that. Or if you get an email, just ignore it. Um, but it also enables you to start coming to our classes. You can come to any of the classes on here. You know, like I will say um, real quickly, on Friday afternoons, that video production is not a class. We have a green screen back here. And basically, that's a time if someone wants to create a video. We can shoot a video for you on the green screen. And basically, it enables you to, to uh, put whatever background you want behind you, like get the weather, you know, if you've seen that. Um, just don't wear green, you know, if you'll see the anchor man too and he doesn't have legs or whatever. Uh, but if you fill this out and check box A, then I'll send it to the school. They will then in turn send you a discount code for the cl classes for half off. You'll probably get that, I would say, probably no later than tomorrow. You could start your classes as soon as you wanted. Um, but that's an option for you. Also, if you do that, I'll give you one of these books. It's called the Millionaire Real Estate Agent Book, just as your free gift for coming tonight and doing that. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, how long that code be good for? Uh, the code is good for a week, but if you call them, then they can extend that. I don't think they're. Um, if you want to start coming to classes here. Yes. Okay, that's what my question. Yes. And. Sure. That's fine. Just call them and just say, "Hey, I need to extend mine. Here's my situation." Um, I don't know if they allow you to buy half the package or whatever, but you can certainly check in the options or whatever like that. If you wanted to do something along that lines, you know, just check with them and just say, hey, this is my situation. Just the top part and then check box A. Right. Or if I accidentally forget to do then just ignore it. <laughs> I try to remember, but somehow I'm Basically, what you're doing is saying that after you get your real estate license, then you're, you will be sponsored by Keller Williams. Now, there's no length of term. If you decide, hey, you don't like it here, you could leave. You know, there's no payback penalty or anything like that. We just want you to give us a shot if we're going to train you. You know, basically. So. Sure. Is everyone pulling this out? Because I need to go grab another book if that's the case.